I'm Virginia Rodriguez from Startup TV and we are here today with Julie Meyer from Ariadne Capital and Entrepreneurs Country, that's right. Mm -hmm. And we are talking today about why not to go to Palo Alto here at Toa Berlin. Mm -hmm. So, hi Julie. Hi there. Why not to go to Palo Alto? <laughs> well, um, there's many good reasons to go to Palo Alto. And having grown up in Palo Alto, I could tell you all of the good reasons to go to Palo Alto. Um, but the macro trend is that great entrepreneurs can come from any place on earth. And they are, right? Yes. Every corner of the planet, um, it, it may not be perfectly evenly distributed. What, but um, great entrepreneurs are building businesses everywhere. What is not perfectly distributed is the infrastructure and the connectivity and the networks. That is not yet you know, evenly distributed across the planet. And, and for Absolutely. that reason, Palo Alto seems to have an edge. Um, but it's, it's, it's not just that it's competitive in Palo Alto, it's just that the markets are massive. You know, the, the European market is 500 million people, right? The challenge there, and this is of course what we're tackling with Entrepreneur Country, is how to make startups and corporates discoverable between themselves. So that if you are a Prague-based vis visual analytics company with a technology which is relevant to Airbus in Bristol, how do you find each other and to figure out how to partner effectively? That's a real challenge. And talk a little, a little bit about your book. Where, what this country of the entrepreneurs, what is special about this entrepreneurial country? We see entrepreneurs go to a different country every day. So we actually don't feel that we live in the real world. We feel that we go to a place where every other entrepreneur who has to run a business and deal with banks pulling your overdraft and <laughs> yes. products not shipping on time and employees you know, saying that they're sick when they're not sick. We deal with all of these pressures and yet we still have to drive the train. We still have to make it happen day in, day out, make cash flow, ship the products and so forth regardless of what's happening. So entrepreneurs are always sharing information about ways to build their businesses with other entrepreneurs and it's a safe zone. And so, um, you know, as we were going into the financial crisis and as the financial crisis got worse and worse, I remember saying to myself, I wish more people would go to entrepreneur country and who could really understand how difficult it is. Because I think the average person, frankly, has no clue what it means or, or what it takes. Yes, I totally agree. Very often I feel like I'm swimming against the current mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Because you have to hear many no's and people put, try to pull you out when yeah. actually yes. you have to keep your vision and your motivation, right? And, and, and in general, sales and business is really sales. You have to be comfortable with people saying no to you and saying, okay, just because they've said no, it means that I don't yet understand how to get them to say yes. But as an entrepreneur, it's even more personal because you're saying, yes. I have a vision of the future and people are saying, you're crazy. Your vision of the future is not going to be a reality. So it's hard to have the kind of steel in your, in your backbone to say, no, you're crazy. I can see <laughs> the future and, and I'm willing to live an abnormal life to get there. And I'll show you. That's right? right. That's right. That's right. So other thing that you were saying that was very interesting during your talk was capital will follow the entrepreneur. So it's very normal for entrepreneurs to struggle with financial issues, yeah. especially in the beginning. Yeah. So tell me more about your experience. We well, see, I've, for 15 years I've been helping entrepreneurs, um, I've been investing in them, um, helping them raise bigger rounds of funding and so forth. And the difference between the ones that are successful and the ones that are not successful is the ones that are not successful really come like as a supplicant for cash, right? Mm -hmm. And the ones that are successful, they recognize, hey, actually, the money's trying to find me. I'm the one with the vision of the future and the money is trying to find me. And then if you kind of put that in the historical perspective and to say throughout history, the money, whether it was the Medici family, Queen Isabella, whomever, the money has always been trying to find the men and the women with the ideas and their ability to execute that. So that is a historical fact. And so if we think about ourselves and we're building a product in a garage in Berlin and we say, oh my God, I don't have enough money after two months, what am I going to do? We have to step back and to say, the money is trying to find us. And, and somebody told me that when I was very young and it changed my life because I stopped focusing on the money and I started focusing on my vision, my contribution. And the more I focus on my contribution and my vision and executing that vision, the less I worry about the money and the more the money finds me. So it's a very personal experience. I'm not just saying this yeah. because I've read a history book. It's really been my experience over 25 years. 
And it's very tricky for entrepreneurs. You have a vision, but you also have to stay focused and at the same time open to see what the world is telling you. And in that's case right. you have to shift gears a little bit. That's right. You have to right? stay down. Then you have to look up and look out. Then you have to shift down. You have to look up. You look out. You have to make sure that you're open to any information. And yet you have to say, okay, right. I, I hear that, but I still think it's this. So it's a, it's open, closed. It's uh, confident, humble, it's um, encouraging trust in your team but still being um, firm. It's all of these both sides of the coin. You, you can't just be one thing, you have to be you know open and closed at the same time, strong and comforting and trusting as well. So it, it just takes an enormous toll on the person. You wouldn't yes. want to live with an entrepreneur. You would not. No. Yeah, this is why entrepreneurs have to stay together. That's right. That's why they go to, with each other. That's why they go to entrepreneur country. Yeah. Yes, yes. And tell me a little bit more about your story. So nowadays you're a venture capital, you're investing or an angel. That's right, that's right. Um, we actually have our own venture capital fund. Yes, yeah. yes. And prior to that, did you yeah. have your own company? What did you do? Yeah, so um, I was lucky. I came out of INSEAD where I went to business school in 1997. So I immediately had a network of people all over the world who were my friends and it really helped me see if you're going to do something do something build. So I owe a lot to INSEAD for having been the business school and the network of friends that I created. And I came up to London and um, the internet was exploding on 1998-99, perfect time. Yes. And I thought, wow, I, I want to play a big... So all of my friends went into banking and consulting <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, no, I want to be at the ground floor of what's happening. So I built a, a network of entrepreneurs called First Tuesday and I was very fortunate because it became the kind of dominant network mm -hmm. across Europe. 500,000 people coming to First Tuesday events, the First Tuesday every month. Um, and again, I was very fortunate because I was able to sell the business to um, uh, an Israeli venture capital group in July 2000 and made some money. And so um, that helped me then in setting up Ariadne Capital because I still had the same vision that European entrepreneurs were incredibly um, brilliant, mm -hmm. but they weren't being served by the current financiers of entrepreneurship. And I said, I'm going to build the gold standard for the financing of entrepreneurship in Europe. You got out of the heart of Silicon Valley, but you saw big opportunities here in Europe and decided to stay, which is... That's right. That's perfect as well. Yeah. And so, well, I can see from you that community, entre uh, community of entrepreneurs and network, it's very important. That's right. And you've been working on this more than, right. uh, throughout your life. What kind of advice would you give to entrepreneurs when they go out networking and meeting people. Yeah, you know, what has always served me really well is, um, and I don't, I'm not trying to sound altruistic here, but I really try to focus on how I can bring something to the person. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to listen. Like last night at the speaker's dinner, I had about four great conversations and I took away two to three introductions that I would make for four different people. That didn't take me more than 20 minutes at night. Yes. And as a result, you, you it's not just about, I, I think of it as throwing some goodwill into the universe. Who knows what happens? Maybe one of those introductions will be quite useful, hopefully all eight to 12 of them. Yeah. But the point is, is that if you approach things with, what can I do to help somebody? How can I contribute to your success? Now, you, you can't spend your entire life doing that. But if you selectively say, actually, I know somebody and I can tell this person or I can help them, then you, you've just created some goodwill you, you, you've demonstrated the kind of person that you are. You're a net contributor. You're not trying to take, you know, let's yeah. figure out how I can take as much as possible and so forth. And the rewards always come back to you. If you do it with a kind of a spirit in your heart of I'm here to create value from which all of us are going to benefit. And you really mean that, right? It's all the stuff that our parents t taught us when yeah. we were children. But if you really mean that, it is amazing how it comes back to help you, right? It might come back in 10 years. I've gotten emails from people who said, you won't remember me, but you know, first Tuesday, Vienna, blah, 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 and so forth, you introduced me to somebody, I got a job, I made some money, you changed my life. And you're like, really? Did it, I mean, really? <laughs> One I, introduction, you, know, you never know. You never yes. know, right? Yes. And similarly, I've been helped by people along the way, yeah. right? So I've been helped, so I naturally want to help other people. And that generosity is a virtuous circle, right? If yeah. we just stop to remember how much we have been helped by other people, we naturally want to help other people. And you create a virtuous circle as opposed to the tragedy of the commons where people say, oh, I'm going to take my bit of it and I don't care what happens to everybody else. And frankly, most of the world operates on a tragedy of the commons, yes. right? And so entrepreneurs have to unleash this natural gener generosity and their natural ingenuity 
and this kind of desire to make a net contribution to the world. And if we can win that war, if we can say this is the way society works, then we've really done something. This is definitely the entrepreneur's country. <laughs> this is spirit. Yes. I've just talked with Julie Meyer. It was an amazing talk. And we are saying goodbye from Tour Berlin 2014. Yeah. <laughs>